Hi guys, or girls. Um, I'm Alex. I'll be going over what's new in Angular 5. Kind of. Because right now we are at not October 23rd, so not 5th yet. Um, right, so the first new thing is preserve white spaces. And so this is a property on components. And so if you have a component and you have two buttons, one says hot and one says dog with a space in between. The buttons should show up with a space in between, right? So the new thing is preserve white spaces. So when preserve white spaces is set to false on a component, um, and you have the same two buttons, they will not have the space in between. Um, so you can also set it globally, as you can see here. Uh, but right now, it is defaulted to true, but that could change in the future. Um, there are also workarounds to this. Uh, for example, you can add a NGSP, not to be confused with NBSP, and that would be like a space in between the two buttons. And so, yeah, you would have a space in between the two buttons. And so the next workaround is you could wrap the entire thing in a div with ng preserve white spaces, even though you have preserve white spaces as false, and there will still be a space in between the two buttons. Um, but there are also limitations to the workarounds. So suppose I want to create like a bunch of spaces in between the two buttons. Um, it won't work because it'll just generalize to one space. And so notes. Um, right now, it is defaulted to true. Um, you can set it to false globally. Uh, the workaround is to use NGSP, not NBSP. And the more important thing is it can reduce AOT generated code size because less spaces. So next thing is multiple export as names. Um, so this is a property on a directive. Um, so here's an example of like, a very normal directive called sum directive, which is export as one. Um, the only function here is to log something. And so you would call it like this. You would attach sum directive to this div and attach one to maybe someone. And then you can call the log something function, right? So the new thing is now you can export it as one or two, or just any two uh, comma delimited names. Um, so now it can be called with assigning one to someone or two to some two. So notes. This could be really useful for backwards compatibility. So suppose you have a directive, and like at first you want to export it as one, but then you're like, oh wait, I want to name it two, but I don't want to mess up anyone who was using one in the beginning. Um, so yeah, good for backwards compatibility. And to learn more about how export as can be used, there is a link right there. Um, I will be posting all the links I mentioned here in like the comments section like later on in the meetup. Okay, so next thing is I18. N updates. So what is IATN, for those of you who do not know, it is a tool that is for application internationalization. Uh, so basically, it facilitates translations for your app by using industry standard formats, such as XLF, uh, XLF2, and XMB. Um, so what is the workflow generally, for those of you who also do not know? Um, you can attach an IATN uh, property to a heading, for example. Um, it'll include like a meaning, description, and an ID, um, and the text you want to translate. So in this case, it's hello IATNN. So then you would generate the XLF file. Um, so as you can see here, there is still the text to translate in source, and there is some other information, such as your description you put in and the meaning you put in and the ID. And so you would send that to your translator, and your translator would respond, hopefully, with the translation in the target. And so now you can serve your application with that translation. 
Uh, right, so the new things. Um, so there are ways to mark I18N text without creating new DOM elements. This could be like really useful if you had like CSS going on and you didn't want like extra DOM elements interfering. And so one way is to put an ng container um, so it doesn't output any element tag. Another way is to use the comment format. Um, it's much like just another HTML element, but in comment form. But this one is deprecated. So notes. Um, again, it's useful if you don't want to create a new DOM element for CSS purposes. So another new thing. Um, you can, well now there's like a source file information to XMB and XLIFF translations. So if you have another I18N element here with header text and sample, um, before you would be getting the ID, which is unique, a description, meaning, blah, blah, um, with the text that you wanted to translate. And now you can also get the source file that it's in. So this was really helpful because um, IDs are supposed to be unique, but apparently they are also based on the text. So if you change the text because of like a typo or something, it also changes the ID. So it could be useful if you want to differentiate by the meaning that you give it and the source file. So another new thing, um, also related to I18N, uh, no longer using INTL API, which is internationalization API. And so why is that, right? So there are multiple bugs. Um, there are also browser inconsistencies and limited support because every browser has like limited, limited support for INTL API. So instead, we are now exporting data from Unicode uh, CLDR. I'm not going to repeat, or I'm not going to read that whole thing. Um, but yeah, this breaks things that are related to IATN and some date pipes and other pipes. Okay, so IATN and pipes. So by default, Angular only has locale data for a language English US. And so if you need a locale ID to be another language, you need to import it because we're no longer using INTL API. But you can also use old I18N pipes. Um, so you can still use them, but they're not in common module. You have to like pay close attention to this like import order. You have to do common module first and then deprecated I18N pipes module. Um, and you also have to import the INTL API polyfill to use these. Okay, so there are also date pipe changes. Uh, there are actually a lot of these, and I'm not actually going to go through all of them, but there is a very detailed Google Doc that lists like all of them and like how it's different between the two versions and stuff. Um, we'll also be posting that on the meetup. And so, again, you can find the rest at this URL. I'll also post on the meetup. Um, so this also affects currency pipes and percent pipes. Next, zone.js updates. Okay, so what are zones? Um, they wrap every asynchronous thing in the browser, and it also helps Angular find out where to run change detection. And so now there are blacklisted events. So basically, events can get really intense, like scroll, if you're looking at like every time someone scrolls, which can make the app slow, right? So now you can add scroll to blacklisted events. So it doesn't um, look at that outside the ng zone. So a couple months ago, um, someone did a talk on new things in 4.3, and they mentioned HTTP client module, and it's not deprecated yet, but I would like to rehash that. So with HTTP client module, you now don't have to manually extract JSON. Uh, you can use HTTP client testing module, and you can use interceptors. Okay, so to dive deep into this one. Um, so not have to manually extract JSON, right? So before you had to do a map thing and get like the JSON that way, but now you get the JSON without the map. So using HTTP client testing module um, before, HTTP module, um, there's a lot of boilerplate, there's a lot of like 
mock backends you had to do, which you still do have to do, but like HTTP testing controller really helps with that. So there's like less code in your test for HTTP calls. Okay, and the last one is you can use interceptors. So what are interceptors, right? So they are called for every request and response. Um, they're really useful for like setting headers, um, handling errors, or just logging things into your application. Um, so yeah, and that's all I have. Yeah. <laughs>